Hello guys, nice to see you again uh, in the series of live streaming called Life with Understanding. Mm -hmm. And uh, today my guest is a professional footballer, uh, even playing in Premier League in the past and a player of Newcastle United. His name is Rolando Arons, currently playing in Scottish Premiership. So I hope that he will join me uh, in a couple of uh, seconds. Uh, so we have agreed that we will start at uh, six o'clock his, his local time, which is seven o'clock. A Slovak time. Of course, your questions, guys, are really welcomed uh, during uh, this live streaming. Uh, my estimation is that it's going to last for about 45 minutes maximum. So you can ask your questions in the during the conversation, or you can send it even now. So I guess uh, Rolando is going to be a, a a good guest uh, within the series of live understanding. We have met uh, together in uh, Liberec, which is a Czech team, uh, when he was on loan uh, directly from Newcastle to United. He spent there half of the season and uh, we had a couple of discussions. So, uh, yeah, I, I, go, I hope there's going to be a very interesting discussion. And I can see that uh, Rolando is already joining. So, Rolando, if you ask me to join uh, for the live conversation, it would be fantastic. <laughs> because I'm not the technical skilled. I hope that you can send it to me. Yeah, let's try to click on you. Yeah, you have to send me uh, the request for live uh, live streaming. Uh, yeah, let me see if I can handle it out. Yep, that's it. Rolando is uh, much more skilled in uh, this kind of technology, especially in Instagram. And so he, already, he has already sent me the, the request. So he's joining me. Right. Hello. Nice. Yeah. Nice to see you, buddy. Can you hear me properly? Okay. Sorry? Can you hear me properly? Yeah, wait, give me two seconds. Two seconds. No, no problem. Nothing. <laughs> oh. Nice to see you, buddy. It's, it's one time we have not seen each other. It's again a pleasure to see know, you on the virtually. So, how is life? It's good. It's obviously the coronavirus is it's not really helping things. But it's okay. Man. How, how it's do you see, how do you see the situation now? I don't know. It's uh, it's confusing. Um, obviously, I've never in my life seen something like this. Yeah. So it's strange. Nobody of us. Yes, nobody of us. But we can, yeah, take, yeah, yeah. we can take something out of, out of this crisis. If you call it, we can call it crisis. So currently, you are uh, at home in UK, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm in, um, I'm in Bristol. I grew up in Bristol. I see, I see. So yeah. I'm down at my mom's house. Ah, I see, I see. Yeah. So, uh, do you have any information from the club? Because can't you play for Motorwell uh, in Scottish Premiership? So, do you have any information when we should return to uh, to standard uh, training regimen? I don't think um, anyone really knows exactly what days, because obviously it's, it's down to the government. So. Yeah, when that happens, then I think the clubs will have a, a better idea. I see. Are you somehow in the contact with the with the guys uh, from the team or from the coach as well, from the manager? Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, the coaches they they give us we've got a group chat, so the coaches are giving us updates on what's happening and sending in little programs for us to do. I'm in a Newcastle group chat as well, so it's. Ah, I see. I okay. to, you can train both guys. Yeah, you can you can improve. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, are you also having some trainings uh, via Zoom? Because I've seen that some players are doing that. I've seen Liverpool guys are, are training uh, uh, using the Zoom connection. No, no, we, we're not. We're not doing Zoom. We've just got sent a program, and just you have to do the program. So. I see. So, how do you feel now physically? I'm all right, man. I feel like yeah. I might be a bit rusty if I was to go back now. Because but... I have seen some videos working you in the gym uh, in the in the garden. So. Yeah, so yeah keep, I've been keeping yourself fit, right? Yeah, I'm ordering a, a bike today as well. So, yeah, good, good, good. Yeah, okay, so and what about the mental aspects of, of this coronavirus? How do you handle this? <laughs> Staying inside. <laughs> you accepted sure everything as it is. Yeah? Sorry, you accepted everything as as it is. We cannot change it. So. Yeah, yeah, you have to. Yeah, because there's nothing I could do about it. You know what I mean, so. yeah. Okay, so Ron, I will I will uh, say a few words about uh, yourself uh, before we start, and I have prepared a couple of questions for you. 
So uh, as I said okay. at the beginning, this conversation will last maximum for 40 or maybe 45 minutes. So uh, yeah. it's and, and, and uh, I started this kind of uh, Instagram live series uh, this week, and uh, my first guest was um, was a football player of uh, the team I work with, Slovan Bratislava, and his name is Mienti Abena. So you are my second guest. So uh, okay. yeah. So how we came across to, to each other? It was as I have said during uh, your your loan uh, in Slovan Liberec, and uh, at the time yeah. I, I was working for the team the full season. So it's actually one yeah. and a half year ago already, yeah. Sorry, it's been a year. Yeah, it's been a year already, yeah. So it's a, it's the time is yeah, it's, time it's crazy yeah. how fast time goes. Man. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the crazy. Yeah. Time flies, yeah. And yeah. yeah, we had a couple of discussions, and I like uh, also you as a person, but also your your uh, playing style, which I like very much. Yeah. So uh, as I have said, currently you're playing uh, for Motherwell in uh, in Scottish League. So how do you find uh, this opportunity to play in the Scottish League? I guess it's for the first time to, uh, for you to play there, yeah? Yeah, it's the first time. I've, I've played there before in pre-season games uh, against Scottish teams for Newcastle. But yeah, this is my first time playing the league. And how, do you, uh, how, do, how do you find the league? To, how do you find the league? It's quite similar to Czech. It's cold. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's really, I wanted to say. All the yeah, thing, you know, Czech, the Czech is really, really cold. Very physical. Yeah, Czech is, yeah it's physical. Um, Obviously, they speak English here, so it helps to um, to ease into it. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah, you don't really need to um, ask someone to ask someone else <laughs> what they're saying. It was very so. hard for you, <laughs> but as I know, because not not so many guys uh, in the locker room were yeah, speaking English. English. So all the time when I came, yeah, we, were, we were happy that we could talk each other. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because I could speak to someone. <laughs> okay, Yondo, so yeah. maybe I would tell a few words about you uh, to the other guys that don't know you. Uh, actually, they can Google you or they can also visit your Instagram account at least. Uh, but a few words. So you are still very young players. You are 24 years old. And uh, you were originally born in Jamaica, right? And when you were five years old, you moved to, to England. So uh, yeah. my question is, what was your decision to move to England? Um, my mom... Oh, my mom not your decision, to... So what was your decision of your family to move to, to England? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, my, my mom was already here. My dad was already here. Ah, I see. So they were already working in Bristol at the time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I, I was living with family in Jamaica, and then I think my mom really worked. Obviously, she missed me. Ah, and, I see. Uh, was it difficult yeah, for you to, to adjust uh, to the to the completely different environment? Or you don't remember it, um, um, that so not so much? Um, not, not that, not really, because where, where I live in... Bristol, where I did live, was uh, there's a Jamaican community. Ah, okay. So there's there's a lot of us there. So it was easy, and my my whole family is Jamaican as well. And there's some of them live in England in Bristol. So oh, it, was, it was it was quite easy for me. Yeah, yeah. and uh, your first club uh, was Bristol, like uh, as I've seen uh, also on Wikipedia. Bristol City, yeah. So Bristol was the your first. It wasn't. Club. That wasn't my first club. That was my first uh, uh, professional. Team. Professional team, yeah. But before you played uh, for other teams. Yeah, like Sunday League, uh, ah, like okay. local teams. Okay. So, yeah. what, well, how how old were you when you started playing? Uh, I think I was ten. Ten. Ah, so it's quite late. They used to say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Also, my, <laughs> my first guest on on this series, uh, as I said, was BNT, and he's the Dutch guy. And he said that he started playing football when he was eleven. So I said, "Oh my God! If you tell the experts currently that you start playing football at ten or eleven, they say, oh, it's too late for you, guy.' Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Now, like kids are playing for four, four years old. Yeah, yeah. What do you think about this? Do you think that it's a good, a good thing to, to so uh, um, in, in, in such an early age to involve the uh, the, the kids in the sports? Uh, it depends because I see, like, when I even when I joined, I joined Bristol City when I was thirteen. Yeah. And there was boys there from they were five years old training up until sixteen, and they didn't make it. So for me, it's like it 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 doesn't really matter at that age. Maybe when you get a bit older, but if you're good at football, you're good at football. Yeah, All the academy is going to do is, uh, is is polish your talent. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, I, I don't think it makes much of a difference. I agree with you completely. Yeah. Okay, so do you remember also the time when uh, you have clearly seen that I am going to be a professional football player? Do you remember this? The first time? Yeah, but you just realized, oh my God, <laughs> it's going to be my life and I'm going to earn a lot of money out of this. <laughs> uh, when I was... The first time I thought about being, like, I thought, oh, this is possible, I was 16. 
when I first signed for Newcastle. Yeah, yeah, I've seen. That was the first time I thought, wow, this is this is big. This is big. You were such a big prospect for Newcastle. And uh, as I have seen also the statistics, you played the, the two, two seasons, I guess. Yeah. Or it was more seasons? Yeah. yeah. Uh, two seasons. And he well, you Newcastle. played 22 matches and scored two goals. At least according to Wikipedia. Um, <laughs> no, nah, this is, a, I've scored, I think I've scored four. They need to update. Four goals, four assists, 20 games, something like that, 20 something games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, of course, but you are still a player of Newcastle. So you are just on loan in Motorwell FC. So it's your desire yeah. to come back to, to Newcastle, to your home, uh, home, home, home club. Um, I've realized because obviously I had I had a lot of uh, injuries when I was younger. Um, I realized just playing football is the most important thing. So wherever I'm going to play football and I'm happy playing, um, that's what I'm going to seek. Hopefully, it is at Newcastle because I've been there for eight years. So, so it kind of feels like my second home. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I but um, if it's somewhere else, I just I just I love football, so I want to play. I'm not really interested in just picking up money. Wow, it's good hearing uh, from their side. It's good hearing. Yeah. So you are enjoying currently. You are healthy. You are fit. Of course, yeah. we are sad. Yeah. We cannot play uh, due to coronavirus, as we have discussed before. Uh, but you are ready. So you are enjoying the time, which is the most important thing, uh, I guess, for every single yeah. football player and athlete as well to stay healthy. Okay, is your family as well healthy? Everything is alright because I know we have got the small son. Everything, everything. So this is this is probably the longest I've ever spent with my family since uh, being a footballer. Wow. So do you think? Yeah. Do you see it as a, as a positive side of this coronavirus crisis? Yeah, yeah, that, that's yeah, that's the the one good side of it. To be fair. I see, I see. How old is your son now? My son's four. He's four already. Yeah. Okay. Nice, nice, nice to see <laughs> some pictures on Instagram from time to time. It's really nice. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so ba going back to your youth career, so you started playing uh, in Bristol, and was your position all the time the winger, or did you play also some other positions? When I when I first went to Bristol City, I was a striker. Ah, I see. Yeah, but I I don't like playing up front. So then I went to left wing, then I went to left back. A left wing as well. Yeah. You know I mean? But you're for yeah, the guys that don't wing. know you're left footed, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So I played left wing, and then I went to left back. For a year or two, I think, and then I signed for Newcastle as a winger. I see. So at that yeah, time, I was, it was playing it, it was, uh, Who was the uh, the coach of the manager of Newcastle when you joined the, the first team? It was Rafa Benitez. Alan Pardew. Alan Pardew. Ah, Pardew. I see. I see. So was he the the one that he, he said, yeah, "Look at the look at the you and said, ah, this is the guy who's going to play with my team." In 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 um when you sign as a, a youth team player, is the like the academy manager and the, like, what do you call them? There's like a, a guy that scout? recruits the young players. Scout. Yeah, it's not really a scout. Agent, it's, it's agent. Like a academy, academy recruitment or something. Ah, I see, I see. Yeah, yeah. They recruit the young players ah, and they'll pass it on to the first team staff. So I don't think the, when I first signed, I don't think the manager. Ah, okay, 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 okay. Was it difficult for you? The to, people in the academy. Did. Was it difficult for you to go from, uh, from the youth team to the, to the A team, was it a big step for you? No, no, because um, the only thing that was hard was training every single day. My body wasn't used to it. <laughs> so, where I was at Bristol City, and I had a I had a few problems at Bristol, and I, like we didn't we didn't I think we trained twice a week I think two times three times max I think. A week. <laughs> I see. Okay. To go into training every single day. Of course, I mean, sometimes, sometimes twice two games a week. Yeah, I see. Yeah, like a lot was, of matches. It was difficult. So for for you, it was really difficult from the side of recovery, or also the the yeah. yeah I've seen. Just for the, like my whole lifestyle because I didn't I didn't know this was what. Happens, uh, I see. <laughs> but was it was it a breaking yeah, yeah. point for you that you have realized that this is really going to going to be my life? Sorry? Was, was it also the point when you joined the A team, like you realized, oh my God, I'm you know, good enough to play in the Premier League. Uh, I've got everything that I need. I, I, I always thought I was good enough. But what was hard for me was, because um, where, where, I don't know if you know, but in the south of England to the north of England is completely different. Yeah, it is. So now like I have, in Bristol, there's a, there's a quite a lot of, uh, Black people and yeah, there's a lot of uh, Jamaican people, but in Newcastle, there there isn't really. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. the food. I was living with a family from Newcastle. The the food was different to what I'm used to. 
Like the culture is different. <laughs> the boys when I was, <laughs> I was the only like uh, Jamaican player. Well, not Jamaican, but like player from down south. Right, like, right. In the whole thing, everyone else was from Newcastle, so it was like the culture is different. Like, when I'm speaking to people, it was it, it was tough to be fair to adapt. I can understand. So probably that was the most difficult thing for you to adjust to the new environment. To yeah, new I people, actually wanted to leave. Actually, new culture. Yeah, yeah, I wanted to leave. Um, ah, like see. four months in. I wanted to leave. I was. I didn't really enjoy it. Really? So that was it. Was there yeah. anybody that helped you at the time? Yeah, I spoke to. Uh, I spoke to my mom. Obviously, I spoke to a physio there at Newcastle. Um, he's still there now, actually. Yeah. And he was speaking to me, saying, "Yeah, stick in," because um, just before I signed for Newcastle, I had an offer from Leeds United. Yeah. But they offered me a professional contract, so I was thinking. Oh, I could have been a professional at Leeds, but here I, I signed a scholarship and I don't enjoy it and blah blah blah. And you know these little things that go through your head when you're when you're depressed or stressed out. Yeah. And I thought, I, the reason I signed for Newcastle was because I wanted to play in the Premier League. Yeah. So I need to, do you know what I mean, give it a go and yeah, suck in. So your debut was when you were 18 years old or 17. I was 18. 18, yeah, I see. So it was. Uh, do you think that it was uh, it was the right time to, to to play, or was it too early for you? Yeah, yeah. I I, I thought I could have played the season before. Yeah, yeah. there was a time where it was the right I time. To feel it like, uh, yeah, 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 like I started to feel like physically, I was uh, when I was 17, 18, I was much faster than everyone in my age, and like physically strong enough to play f like first team. Yeah. When I'm training with the first team players, and you're at the start, you're getting pushed over. And you're on the floor, and then after it's like, and then you feel like, yeah, I'm, I'm ready now. Do you know what I mean? But um, even like my ability was starting to kick on, kick on. And I felt like I was proving, improving all the time. When I was training with the first team, mm -hmm. I was training very well. You wouldn't be able to tell I was a young player. Do you know what I mean? So that's when I thought I was ready. Yeah, the, the timing was perfect for me, to be fair. Right, right, right. So, as I have also seen, you, you represented England also under the team 20, under 20. And, but you had the chance yeah. at the time to choose between uh, representing Jamaica or England. Why have you decided for England? Um, just before I got called up for England, or was it just after under 20s, I got a call up for Jamaica. But because of my age at the time, like I spoke with my agent and I thought to myself, like, um, it, it, to play for England and then just like develop naturally instead of going to Jamaica and then when I'm young and I don't really understand what's going on over there and the setup in Jamaica is not, it wasn't at the time, wasn't as good. So I didn't know what to expect. Yeah, Whereas England, you know how it's going <laughs> to, you know how it's going to be in England. It's professional, it's well done. And yeah, I just thought it was the, the better option at the time was to play for England. So if uh, you were able to do the decision now, would you change your mind or <laughs> would, you, would, you, would you do the same? Well, if I was to go back in time? Yeah. No, 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 no. Okay. No, okay. I, I would have done the exact same thing. I expected that, man. <laughs> okay. So yeah. some, of, some of the experts, uh, they used to say that uh, your uh, playing style is similar to, to Sterling, uh, who is playing for Manchester City. I know that you know each other and you personally as well. So how, how would yeah. you describe this guy? Because I'm a big fan, uh, indeed, I'm a big fan of Manchester City. So how would yeah. you, what would you say about this guy, generally speaking? Uh, Raheem? Yeah. Oh, he's an he's a, he's a example to, I think, um, all players that are coming from where we're coming from. Even just young footballers in general. He's, a, he's an example. And what he's done in the sense of he's come through young, he's had a period where... He's been injured, he's come back again, he's been doubted, he's come back again. The papers were against, he's come back again. So that, that sort of character is is an example to everyone. And everyone looks at him and say everyone thinks he's a he's a, obviously an incredible player. Yeah, he but apart from that as well, like he's he's really someone that is a lot of people aspire to be there. Like, is he a sort of role role me. model for you as well? Yeah, of course, of course, of course, yeah, of course. You just gotta look at what he's done already at his age, you know what I mean? It's and amazing, really. The way now he's carrying himself is like but when you are talking about the role models, did you have some kind of role models when you were young, when you were a young player, let's say 15, 16? Um, my first role model, which is for, was Terry Henry, obviously. Terry Henry, okay. Yeah, wow. yeah, 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 yeah. I love, <laughs> love, 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 yeah. I love Terry Henry. It's very clever. I don't know if you know this. 
I don't know if you know this person, but um, he's from Bristol. He grew up in the same area as me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, oh. His name's uh Bobby Reed. Yeah, yeah. Bobby Reed. He now plays for Fulham. So he was the first player that I knew personally oh, okay. that was a professional footballer. So, to me, it was like, oh my god, this is possible because we grew up in the same area. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, I'm also reading the the questions from uh, some of the guys watching this uh, live streaming, and there are certain questions like many people are uh, uh, asking you to to stay in Motherwell <laughs> FC. So of course, <laughs> sometimes it's not only dependent on yourself, but uh, as I, as you have said, so you are completely satisfied there and you are healthy, so you can play. Of course, due to Corona crisis, you cannot mm -hmm. now. But generally speaking, you are very satisfied over there. But there are also some uh, some Sheffield United fans, and I did I didn't mention or has Sheffield Wednesday, Wednesday. Sheffield Wednesday. They get angry if you call him Sheffield United. Sorry, sorry, <laughs> Sheffield Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, my mistake. Yes. And you know, also, you uh, you played for Sheffield Wednesday. So, how would you describe the time? Because one of the last questions is uh, how how did you describe your time over there? Um, it was it was amazing. I really, I really, really, really enjoyed it because I think being away in Italy and then Czech Republic, I was happy to be <laughs> back in England playing. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So, and I when I played, I was doing very, very well. Unfortunately, I picked up a, a injury at the end of my my time there, yeah, which ruled me off. Uh, was it was it only a half season? Half, half season for you? Yeah. Yeah, I played. I think I played nine games or something like nine, that. I've I, I done my. I done my ankle ligaments, and then when I've come back, I've pulled my quads without knowing I've done it. Oh, yeah, it, yeah. Was, it was worse than what I thought it was. I thought oh, I was just a little strain, but it was it was really bad. So I had to be careful with that. Yeah. So you had a couple yeah, of injuries yeah. during your career, and was it always uh, so difficult for you to get back, or did you maybe at the time when you were recovering, did you also use uh, some kind of support of maybe sport psychologists or mental coaches? I think uh, my problem was when I was younger was I used to try and deal with it by myself. So yeah, yeah, I'd get, I'd got. I remember the first time I got injured at Newcastle after playing for the first team. Um, I've done my hamstring, and I've come back, and I've done it again. But like I just used to get on with it, get on with it. Yeah, and yeah. I've done it the third time, and then I remember speaking to my mom on the phone I started I started crying mm -hmm. and that was the first time I felt like oh okay this is how I'm meant to feel this is this is how I should get that do you know what I mean because I didn't really let go it was still bothering me yeah yeah and when I spoke to my mom in other words you didn't to, accept, accept it what is so that was the problem yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I, what I kept thinking was all right cool let's let's go let's go let's go like um it's not like do you know what I mean sometimes you really need to accept it and then Think about it. Let the feeling go, and mm -hmm. then you can move on that way. Sort of keep it. Keep exactly. It there. Exactly. So you were trying to handle everything by yourself, as I've understood. But yeah, and I was only eighteen, nineteen. Yeah, so it was it was impossible. So yeah, uh, but was there a possibility to to visit the sports psychologist in, in Newcastle United at the time? Uh, we had one um, when Steve McLaren was uh, manager. I see. I think it's um, something black. I can't remember. It doesn't matter. So, but that was our. Uh, was he working also with the team or individually? He's working with the team, but you can speak to him individually. I see. I see. Okay. Okay. So, I don't know if you remember, but uh, also me as a mental coach, I don't use no tech. I don't use any strategy or techniques or tools, and my uh, coaching is based on certain understanding. So, do you remember if he was using some kind of external methods or tools? Mm -hmm. um, no, it's just felt like a conversation. It's a co sort of conversation, yeah, I see. Yeah, and it was just like sort of like reassurance. So like it would be like it's it's, it's normal how you feel. You're you're going through a lot because I was going through other stuff as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was diff it was a difficult time for me, especially being so young. And then you have the pressure of being yeah like with our football. Everyone's looking at you a certain way because they're expecting a certain standard of you because you're the most talked about thing in Newcastle. And yeah, yeah. There's a lot, it's a lot to deal with. You know what I'm trying to, I'm trying to say, and where I sometimes try to ignore it, it it was all building up. Yeah. And then yeah, it's always it's the most uh, or the the hardest thing for the player when he's injured, he cannot play. And I can also see it in my practice uh, almost on a, let's say, weekly basis when somebody comes who is injured and he's very, you know, frustrated or could, he could be even depressed. And the reason why yeah. he's depressed, of course, it seems to be it's because of the injury. Because in a case that I'm not injured, then I wouldn't be depressed. But the, the truth is that um, he's depressed or frustrated 
because many times he only see himself through the lens of performance. So in other in other words, like mm -hmm. if I play and I'm good enough, and if I don't play, I'm shit. In, you know, to to be easy said, and that yeah. that's what I want try to try to change also within my practice and to see and to show the guys that they are not only football players, but they are something. Like yeah. Players. And most of, most yeah. of the guys they see only themselves through the you know like concept of the body. So the body, of course, is I, I use uh, I, or I see body as a sort of tool that you can use, especially in, in soccer in football. But you are much much more yeah. than body. How do you see this personally? <laughs> How do I see what? Sorry. How do you see that personally? Like, do you see yourself only as a as a football player, or no? But that's the thing. That's the thing. I used to. I used to think like oh, yeah. this is all that matters. Yeah. Like, this is the most important thing. But it realistically, it's not. And you can tell by when something like this happens now, there's no football, so it shows it's not the most important thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So once I learned how to realize, oh, I I have this in my life. I have this in my life, and this is good. And I'm healthy. My family's healthy. I have a child. Like. You start to realize, yeah, football is not really. There's not really that much pressure in it. Yeah, it doesn't mean that you don't, you you don't care. Of course, you care. Because no, I, no, I used to course, say it's yeah. quite funny. I used to say like football is too important to be taken too seriously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's I what we're yeah. speaking about life. Life is too important to be taken too seriously. So it doesn't mean that we don't care. Of course, we care. Uh, we care so much. But if we are so involved here in head, uh, you know, so much thinking and thoughts. And especially about our feelings or to and thinking about the un uh, uncertain future and so and so on, so we could really uh, be struggling at the time. So that's one of the things that I also see in, in my practice uh, on a daily basis. Uh, better said, is that when you see that you are not your thoughts, for example, or you are not your feelings, or even you are not your mistakes, it doesn't mean that you don't care, but you are able to handle it uh, with uh, much better ease or with, with more ease. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. So when we are talking about uh, the mental aspects of preparation, do you have some uh, pre-game routines that you used to have? Um, I need to have uh, a cup of tea before the game. Ah, okay, good. So which kind of tea is it? I have a cup of tea. Um, it's changed now. It used to be mint tea. <laughs> But now then I went to Italy and it was really coffee. Now it's really great. <laughs> no, 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 or some Chinese tea. Chinese tea. <laughs> Chinese tea. Yeah. Have you seen the, the Argentinian one? Argent yeah, do you like it? I haven't tried that, but it looks I good. I might, I might try it. <laughs> you know, there's I see all the players with the, with the, you know, the cup with the straw. Yeah, yeah I know, I know. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna try it, man. So we haven't mentioned also when we are talking about the tea, and uh, you also played in Italy, Italy, and uh, many many players or many people used to drink a lot of coffee. So uh, when you were in uh, yeah. Verona, did you also uh, used to play, or did you also drink a lot of coffee as well? <laughs> My friend, before Italy, I didn't drink coffee. <laughs> it yeah, wasn't yeah. something I drank. When I got to Italy, there's a there's a coffee called ginseng. I don't know if you've had this before. No, 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 I don't know, but. It's the it's the best coffee I've ever had in my life. Yeah. I just kept drinking. I used to drink coffee maybe four times a day, but it's in Italy. It's normal. It's, it's normal, yeah. yeah. Everyone goes for especially yeah, those it's very normal. Just... and just yeah, 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 the yeah, coffee yeah. and finished. <laughs> yeah. It's completely different yeah, than it before, in the UK. You, you see, you order coffee in UK and you got a, this kind of bubble. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You see that? It's a lot weaker in UK. So, how do you remember the times when you played in Hellas Verona? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I really, my time in Italy, I really, really, really enjoyed it. But because it was my first loan, I didn't know exactly what to expect. So I went there and I thought to myself, oh, I'm only here for five months. I can stay in a hotel. It's not going to be that. But I really, I should have got an apartment. I should have made myself feel like I was at home. I should have maybe got a tutor and learned the language properly. It would have made it a lot more easier for me, do you know what I mean? But um. Yeah, but the time that I had was, it was unbelievable. We were struggling, obviously. Yeah. The football side of it was difficult. Mm. But it was, I could live in Italy. Yeah, I, mean, it's, it's I, I really country, enjoyed it. Of course, yeah. Yeah. So we are sending also yeah. greetings to some Italian guys if they're listening to us or watching us. <laughs> yeah. And I like Italy as well. So I used to go there uh, many times uh, with, my, uh, with my family for holidays, uh, many places we visited. 
So when I also have seen you speak Italian, Italian. In it, uh, I used to used to used to learn, but at the time when I was playing, I didn't pay so much attention to that. So yeah. I don't speak so much. Poco. Yeah, I learned a little. <laughs> but you, do you speak Poco. some Italian as well? Uh, a little, a little. No, I understand no. it better. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. It's it's, but actually, it's not not that difficult to learn that. Uh, no, it's not. It's not. It's not. No, no, no. Okay, it's much more uh, much more easy than uh, learn, uh, for example, German. So, <laughs> if you go to Germany, <laughs> Bundesliga probably would be uh, very difficult for you to learn. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, coming back to uh, to the mental aspects uh, of life and football as well. So I personally see a lot of similarities between uh, football and of course life. So we don't have to distinguish it. But uh, when you, for example, look at the kind of motivation, what motivates you the most in life or in football? What motivates me the most? Yeah, yeah. I think. Let's see if he can join us again. So give him give him a couple of seconds, and he seems to be he's back. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, sure, I don't know what happened. Happened. Back again from the injury. <laughs> okay, okay. So, uh, so what, what's the next problem? Or what did you say? It, was it the connection problem? I don't know. I don't know. It just went off. Oh, I, don't you know. Know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Okay. okay so, the, what was the question? Uh, yeah. So, what what motivates you the most in life or in football, generally speaking? Um. I think, apart from obviously my family and my, my child, the thing that motivates me is that you, you know, I know where I come from and I know how hard it was to get to where I am even now, or where, I, where I was at 17, 16. So not, and when I come back to home, I see like the same people that are in the same situations that I was in when I was younger. And I think that's what my biggest motivation to the fact that I've come so far, like, and I still want to go so much further. Yeah, yeah. So do you sometimes return to Jamaica? I haven't been back to Jamaica. Ah, I see. Okay. I was meant to go in, what was it, late May. Yeah, we went to go ah, in May. I see, I see. So maybe in the future, in the near future, you could visit it. Yeah, but yeah. It depends on coronavirus situation uh, as it is right now. Yeah. Okay, man. Yeah, so uh, currently, so as I have said, you are a player of Waterloo FC, but do you have some other ambitions uh, to maybe to, uh, to go to other clubs or maybe to, to, to play in, a, in, a other, in another league? Or is there any desire for you? I know you have mentioned that you are happy that you are playing and you are, you are healthy, but is there still some dream like, let's say, I've got the talent to do so, I've got the hard work, so I'm, I'm, I'm sure that I can do better. Uh, of course, I'm not against Motorwell FC and uh, Scottish Premiership is a good league uh, anyway. But maybe if there is a dream for you, like maybe some further step uh, in the future that you, you even think about it. Yeah, of course. Um, every single thing, the cup competitions that you watch and everyone watches the Champions Leagues, the World Cups, the you know, where, wherever, Premier Leagues and the top leagues in the world, I want to play at the highest levels and compete for the highest trophies. You know what I mean, that's... What I've always wanted to do. I think if you're a footballer and that's not your target, then it doesn't really make sense. But um, yeah, like I still want to be a top player. Do you know what I mean? So do you sometimes uh, visual, visualize yourself or imagine yourself playing in a in a let's say Premier League again and playing with the top the top teams? Um, do you, or do you use yeah, it? Yeah, but because it's it's not hard to do because because I've already done it. It's just like sometimes you remember. Okay, this is what you're capable of doing. But yeah. Obviously, life works out differently, so you need to get to here, 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 and then you can get back to not to that level, but because obviously, I hope I'm better than what I was at 18. But like more than more to get back to where I know I should be. Do you know what I mean? Or I know I feel like I can be. Right. See, some of the guys is is just writing that uh, your desire was to play at uh, Old Trafford. So is it still uh, is it still valid? I've I've done it. That's what I mean. So when I, like yeah. that's what I'm saying. That when you said um, do I visualize it? I I know what that feels like. It's more like yeah. I want this feeling again. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, that's I wanted to ask. Okay, is there any other other things um, you are doing? Uh, let's say on a on a mental level, like you do some some of the procedures or maybe tools or. Or things that, that keep you uh, like uh, also uh, mentally uh, mentally fit. I'm I'm watching the players that play my position 
I see. Okay. Every other day, I'm watching clips of myself probably a couple of times a week. Me and my friend, we sit down and he said, he'll send me clips like, oh, this is what, I don't know, Iron Robin does. Like, look how he does this. So, so it sounds like I've, I've focused my whole life on football, but I don't, in a way. But it, it is a lot. Like, I do think about it a lot. It's a big part of it, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So you are well known also for some kind of tricks that you all also during the matches. Uh, of course, you have to train them uh, hard during the training, uh, trainings, uh, of course. But do you also so, sometimes when you are doing a new trick, do you sometimes uh, are you thinking about this trick, uh, less this trick in hand, or do you know? You just funny. Play? This is this is this is what I, I've been working on with my friend because because I grew up playing uh, football. Can you hear me? Yeah, of course I can hear you. Um, because I grew up playing football on the streets. Like, ah, this, uh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? You don't really think too much. It's just your feet just yeah, does what it wants right, to do. Yeah. So now I'm trying to train myself to to know what I'm going to do. So this is what I'm going to do. So the players around me know what to expect when I'm doing it. Do you know what I mean? Instead of just going out there and <laughs> step over. I, I like the approach. And uh, in my practice, I call it certain understanding. And what I what I know from our conversation and also from uh, the conversation before, and I take a look at you as a, as a style of playing, I know you, that you really rely on the flow. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. You, Even before this uh, this uh, live streaming, I haven't sent you the questions because I don't do it any uh, don't do it, and because I also try to rely on the flow. And I think it's the best thing to be fully involved in the present moment and yeah, definitely. like no no thinking and no thinking at all, just playing, enjoying the moment, and then you are able to also do the tricks much uh, easier than you are thinking about them on the pitch. Exactly, because then- football you, you you can't plan it. Do you know what I mean? You got there, it's unexpected, so you need yeah, to. Yeah. Be able to come out of these situations, and I've been doing it my whole career. Do you know what I mean? So that's the reason why you <laughs> reach the top level, according to me. And it was not a question of, let's say, keeping the routines or keeping the techniques or things kind of, kind of this. Just enjoying what is, understanding who I am, and be involved in the present moment, and to play as best as I can in the moment. Yeah. And uh, you know, it's sometimes we we learn also from other experts, let's say, and then keeping too much. Uh, to think about, and uh, I see uh, also in my practice that there are some guys coming and they are thinking, I need to do this, I need to do, do that, because otherwise, if I don't do this, I don't play well. So they are keeping, you know, sometimes they are so stuck in, in their minds, there's so much thinking, you know, overthinking, I would say, and they go to the match and they sometimes forget what they should do and they don't rely on the flow and uh, they don't play uh, that well. And uh, yeah. especially... In the top levels, like you reach uh, in the Premier League, you need to trust uh, what you have learned. You need to trust what you, well, your abilities. And at, during the, the match, you don't have time to think about some techniques or tools. On you just want to play as best as you can. And it's yeah, happening so fast that there is really no ch- no chance to to think about anything. Yeah, so you just it, to say. and even like when you practice in training or you do extras away from football. The things that you practice become natural. They become things that you don't have to think about because your body's so used to doing the movements. You know what I mean, so this is what I'm trying to train myself to do. Motor skills, you know, it's called the motor skills and everything. But you have trained so so long time, and uh, plus when you are talented and devoted, that's a combination that could uh, really uh, keep you in the in the highest level. Yeah. So I guess and I hope that uh, you're gonna reach again a Premier League level. And um, because I'm sure that you have good qualities and everything, uh, and it's still inside yourself. You haven't lost it. It's very yeah. difficult, it's really important to realize. And sometimes it could be difficult, but uh, there are difficult times, and as we have said. So you had a couple of injuries, but you have overcome it, and uh, you are back currently in Motorwell FC and doing the the best as you can. And I'm sure if you keep this level and keeping really uh, on the track, as you as I used to say. Then I'm, able, uh, I'm, I'm I can really see that we were able to reach again the top uh, Premier League uh, club. Yeah. Could be again, old, maybe could be Old Trafford. Could be Manchester City. <laughs> yeah, you can, never know, man. You, never know. You, can, you can play on the other side because Ryan Surrey is on the left side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, some final words you would like to add? Um, For me, it was really uh, again very nice to see you even even online, but to discuss uh, some of the topics. And uh, but before I was thinking like what I should be asking you, and uh, I just rely on the flow. 
And I could still, the area, some of the answers you, you, you answer to my questions, I, I expected your answers because I, I see your style, you know, you're very you know, freely and involved in what these, yeah. and there's not so much overthinking. So I expected some of the answers to be honest. <laughs> but thank you very much, uh, Rizzi. So it was a pleasure to talk to you again and to see you. Yeah. So yeah. thanks for your time. So good yeah, luck. Thank you, man. Thank you. So appreciate it. To your family and uh, thank you, you very too. much again. No, thank you. Appreciate it. Nice. Thank you so see much. You have a good uh, evening. Bye-bye. Bye. Take care, buddy. Bye.